Hi everyone, welcome to my channel and today I would like to talk about a sports hobby I took up last year and it's running. I wouldn't say that I didn't run before. I used to run at university school, but it wasn't something I would describe uh, as a hobby or an activity I stick to. It was rather regular training uh, when I was in the mood to run, when it was a good weather, so potentially many things could stop me from doing it. But everything changed last year. My husband and I decided to add more physical activities into our life, to boost our productivity and energy, to become more sporty and fit, and find something we could be passionate about. We read about different sport activities and running in top things people usually take up because of its simplicity, minimum equipment and more or less easy technique. But just running without a goal wasn't so motivating for us. That's why we found our goal – to run a half marathon. Half marathon is a distance of 21 kilometers. I used to think that running a half marathon requires years of practice and preparation. And it's a very hard thing to do. But we found out that uh, we can prepare for it within 4-6 months. And it sounded challenging enough, so we opted in. We started uh, in November and wanted to have a half marathon somewhere in spring. We searched for some simple trails uh, without mountain ranges and some other complication, just a simple half marathon. And we found a Zurich half marathon takes place at the beginning of April in 2022. And it was a, a, a great choice, because uh, it was uh, near Zurich Lake, with a great view uh, and with a flat surface. So everything was okay and uh, we understood this is what we would like to participate in. We didn't buy tickets at that moment because we were not sure whether everything will work out for us. And that's why we decided to wait a bit. Okay, now we had a goal and commitment, but it wasn't still clear how to start to approach it. We understood that jogging from time to time won't help us a lot and we need preparation. I'm a fan of smartwatches. I like them because they track a lot of things from heart rate to my sleep habits. And at that moment I already had uh, Garmin Lily watches, these ones. And uh, I use them for uh, tracking my yoga activities, occasional running and cycling and walking throughout the day. I also liked them because they looked not so sporty and I could wear them with any outfit. What's more, Garmin turned out to be one of the top brands of smartwatches for running. They have several models designed specifically for running. And we decided to try them out. We bought Forana 45 for my husband and I proceeded with my Garmin Lily. Just several months ago, we decided to buy a new smartwatch Forana 645 Music, these ones. So now I have also all the running metrics, which are more precise with GPS and some other new enhancements because it's a new version of Forana. What are the main features I like about Forana watches? Their ability to measure more precisely running specific metrics like heart rate, pace, speed, strides. The latter ones are calculated better because uh, they have a row on GPS tracker. Uh, the other important ones are energy level and VO2 max. But what was a really game changer is that it has a preparation program for half marathons and marathons. It's called a virtual Garmin code. The program consists of 16-20 weeks of preparation with three five trainings a week. It's rather an intensive training, but it helps a lot. To set up a program, you need to enter your current situation. How many kilometers you run right now? It could be even zero kilometers. Your comfortable running speed and your goal, whether to just complete a half marathon or with a time setting. We chose a time goal of 2 hours and 6 minutes. Then we should choose a coach whose system we are going to use. We had three options and we pick up just randomly Greg McMillan. So our training plan was created according to his system. Because we wanted to catch up quite quickly and win a this, we decided to have five training sessions a week and a long run on Saturdays. At that moment, we had 17 weeks of preparation till our first half marathon. 
At first, we started running on a treadmill. It was November, the weather wasn't so appealing, and uh, it was a great choice uh, to start training just in the fitness center. And we needed a few clothes to buy. As I said, running requires minimum equipment, but it doesn't mean we don't need anything. And our main equipment is clothes and sneakers. And I wouldn't skimp on this. Sneakers should have a good fit for your feet and uh, they should have amortizing sole to prevent your joints and knees from harm and uh, uh, with a good air circulation to let your sweat dry. About clothes. You are going to sweat a lot. That's why you need some synthetic clothes which dry quite quickly because cotton ones will be wet very soon and uh, you'll be running with wet clothes for a long time, which will lead to rubbing your skin. There is nothing pleasant in it. And I'd say that it's very important to have a good fit clothes. They shouldn't be too tight or loose, just a good fit. And uh, uh, otherwise it will lead to rubbing your skin while running. Now to the intimate topic. Having a good underpants is also a hard problem to solve, especially for men. The skin uh, in the grown area tends to rub after a certain period of running, somewhere after 10 kilometers. And uh, especially men who run in shorts, not in leggings, have those problems. So we spent some time till we found uh, an appropriate underpants from Wilson, which are now a good fit for, for us. Uh, it was easier for me because I run in leggings and uh, they are fixed and uh, doesn't change the position uh, throughout running. That's why they don't rub me. One more thing you won't believe. Male nipples tend to rub as well. And this happens again because of a lot of sweating and uh, male t-shirts are not fixed like women's bra. Uh, so they start uh, to irritate the skin after some period of time and then rub it. Uh, runners usually have some tricks to solve this problem, like using adhesive plasters, bandages. So it should be kept in mind if you're going to run uh, more than 10 kilometers at once. Now I can tell more about training itself. We have a customized training plan and we know what our training sessions will be just for one week ahead. It's because it's recalculated each time on the basis of our performance. Or at least uh, I think they uh, do this way. Once a week we had a long run. At the start of the program we had about 80 minutes of running and then it evolved to 110 minutes. So with, at maximum we ran uh, 16 kilometers at the training. The whole distance of 21 kilometers we will run only at the competition according to the program. These long sessions are supposed to, to be run with comfortable speed and not even with target speed. Uh, it helps you to train your endurance. And there are other sessions which are connected with a development of good speed. Uh, they are like interval training with low and high speed high frequency stride in running and running with a target speed. And there are also some light sessions with a comfortable speed and up to 50 minutes. And this help you to keep up with trainings and not to be so exhausted. While both training, the main metric I look at is heart rate. And it helps me to understand whether I run with my comfortable speed, uh, whether I need to slow down or not, and whether I run beyond my capabilities now. And there are five zones split for heart rate. It depends on age and gender. For me, I have uh, easy and warm up uh, zones under 136. And I usually have uh, this uh, type of heart rate uh, once I have yoga activities, uh, walking, or some other easy activities. Then I have aerobic till 175. And uh, my target and goal is to run within this uh, zone because uh, this is the best zone for uh, training your body, burning calories and not to be very exhausted. And uh, the fifth zone is anaerobic. 
it's above 175 and it's red one uh, so uh, it's really hard to run within this zone and um, uh, you won't uh, uh, be able to run for a long time within this uh, zone the program started with a lighter version and became challenging with time uh, but nonetheless just at the start i ran within this five zone uh, with a bad heart rate but uh, without training uh, i taught my body to endure running with a good speed uh, so it can be taught what you shouldn't forget about is hydration you need to drink water every three kilometers you don't need to drink a lot just a little bit but once you get thirsty it means you already dehydrated and uh, while you have a lot of sweating you lose water and salt and by the way uh, at the half marathon organizers sometimes provide electrolyte drinks which help uh, recharge your electrolyte level uh, but just during training i didn't use anything special except water but what about my impression one of my goals was to boost my productivity and energy did i achieve it i will definitely say yes even though i, I needed some time to get accustomed to the pace of our training and needed some time to recover after trainings but uh, having a training session in the morning wakes me up releases my endorphin hormones and uh, I am ready to break into a new working day with a sense of happiness and that everything is possible. I should make a remark here. This uh, usually happens to me uh, after training sessions up to one hour. But after a long run, uh, usually at first I feel very energetic, but within several hours I will feel uh, more tired than usual. Uh, because uh, this type of training is still not so natural for my body uh, but i see the progress one of side effects which i like is that i want to go to bed early and uh, fall asleep quickly i need uh, at least uh, eight hours to recover properly and uh, this helps me to have quite a good regime uh, yes sometimes uh, after complex training i want to sleep even more than eight hours but it's still okay because i don't have any problems with falling asleep training heavily makes your muscles get clogged especially calf muscles so one of my tips is to uh, have regular massage either a manual one or with a massage device it helps me to feel much better and recover earlier well, during my first training months, I saw a lot of progress. My heart rate decreased, I endured long runs, and even I saw my shape is getting better, even though I didn't see any changes on the scale. And my muscles started working properly and heavily, that's why I was getting fit. But if I wanted to lose weight, just running without changing eating habits wouldn't be enough, unfortunately. For, uh, after some long running sessions, I could be so hungry that I could eat even more than expected. That's why it's very important to restrict yourself to have at least the same your usual meal uh, without additional calories to stay in the same shape. Uh, but as far as uh, losing weight wasn't one of my goals and uh, I burn about 500 calories per training. I could eat uh, and enjoy delicious food with carbs even more often and don't have any effect on my body. At the beginning of February, we decided that we would participate the Zurich Half Marathon for sure and bought our tickets. One ticket cost 100 francs per person and it included several francs uh, for insurance in case I'm not able to participate the event because of illness. So now our commitment was not only in our mind, but also we invested uh, our money into this activity. We uh, just relocated at that moment uh, to Zurich, Switzerland and wanted to go on our training here. We didn't find any close fitness centers to our temporary housing. Uh, that's why we decided to run outdoors. Uh, the other reason was that, uh, that we wanted to be more prepared to the half marathon itself because it's held in open air. Uh, the weather wasn't so warm, that's why uh, it implied that uh, we should buy some other like warm clothes 
have to run and for my husband we bought a leggings nike dry fit leggings were perfect fit uh, without rubbing skin and any other issues as you know switzerland is a hilly area with rare flat surface areas and uh, once we started our running outdoors we understood that it's really harder than on a treadmill and it wasn't only because of the surface but also because uh, uh, running on a treadmill doesn't involve some muscles which are used to advance you on the road at least not to the same extent so uh, after some trainings outdoors we had real doubts whether we would be able to finish the half marathon with a desired speed everything was very hard uh, but fortunately we didn't give up and we proceeded with our trainings and got accustomed to new circumstances within two weeks now to the moment x a week before the half marathon we didn't have any trainings according to our program with garmin coach it was a week for recovery and relaxation we received our beep numbers uh, which would track us uh, while running and uh, i started back with some swag uh, it was uh, food drinks supplements and some other small goods from uh, partnering promotion programs on the day of half marathon we had also free tickets for all transport within all zurich transport zones the last gift was a finisher t-shirt but it was gifted only in case you complete a half marathon within specified time range 2 hours 45 minutes but i'd say that it's very doable the speed shouldn't be so big that's why i was sure we would win it as i said i had a relaxing week just before the competition and there is also one more tip about dinner before the half marathon it's a good idea to have something with carbohydrates Pasta with meat and vegetables would be the best option. It will charge you with resources you will be able to use while running. About breakfast, uh, it's uh, better to have uh, some cereals, fruits and vegetables and avoid uh, dairy products so that not to have some unpredicted digestion problems. And it's also a good idea not to drink coffee in the morning uh, because it boosts you just after you drink and then you could feel more tired. So if you really want to have some caffeine, it's better to drink it just before the competition. The atmosphere at the start was very inspiring. There were a lot of people from different countries, about 10,000 of participants. We started with uh, rather a low speed and then switched to our normal speed. The energy from participants can boost you to run faster, to have a bigger speed, but it's very deceptive because uh, you can lose your power quite soon and it would be hard to proceed that's why you need to stick to your training your plan and not to be provoked on the way uh, each three kilometers we had a station with water electrolyte drinks energy bars gels bananas i drank only electrolyte drinks during the competition and ate two times energy bar and a banana and uh, it was uh, enough for me because I didn't want to eat much and you know that uh, you need to uh, train yourself to eat something uh, while running uh, because uh, in other way your body won't be prepared for it the trail was amazing it wasn't raining it was sunny and cold enough to feel comfortable and I enjoyed mountain views the lake and city routes as well uh, along the road uh, there were people with uh, some posters and chants and sometimes they were very humorous and uh, music was turned on uh, throughout the road and sometimes even we had uh, live musicians playing some songs so the whole atmosphere was really amazing the first 16 kilometers we ran quite well without any problems and with a good speed it's because uh, we ran this distance already while training and our body knew what it is but what was after sportsmen call it the wall and it was exactly what we experienced you feel exhausted and uh, you have problems with breathing running becomes so hard but it's even hard mentally to proceed uh, running and uh, you just want to stop with suffering you know that uh, only five kilometers are left not a big deal and that's why you need to make yourself keep running 
As long as my husband and I ran together, we could cheer each other up and we went on. We were motivated by other people who proceed running and we knew we shouldn't give up. At some point we even felt so hard that we decided to walk a bit, but uh, then we ran till the end. And we completed our half marathon with a timing 2 hours and 8 minutes. It was 2 minutes late to our goal, but nonetheless I was very happy we did it. At first after finishing I was very exhausted, but proud of myself. I felt my knees hurt. And at that moment you shouldn't lie or sit and just proceed with walking a bit not to harm yourself. In the finisher area there were a finisher t-shirt given away, some food and drinks and swag from competition partners. Once we got home we felt very tired and the pain was big enough, that's why I took some pills. And once painkillers uh, were activated, I felt very well and that's why I decided to do some cooking, uh, household duties, but I shouldn't have done it. The best thing which I could do after such exhausting activities, just lie and relax. On the next day I took pills as well, but after one more day I recovered completely and everything was okay, so I was ready to run again. Just after finishing, I felt that I wouldn't run a half marathon anymore, at any cost. Uh, but uh, so much endorphin was released after that, that I was so happy and proud that you would like to repeat this feeling. And not only this last moment, but also the whole atmosphere. That's why now we are preparing for a new half marathon, which takes place in Lucerne at the end of October this year. And I hope my body knows now that it's okay to run 21 kilometers and the wall feeling won't come. But we will see. And I'm going to shoot something from this event for you. It would be interesting to hear from you guys whether you participated in a half marathon or would like to participate in it. And what are your tips for enduring and improving your running skills? Uh, leave your comments below, I will read them with pleasure. Thank you for watching this video, please don't forget to subscribe and click button like.